Hey, hello, my name is Jan and welcome to the second part of my Typeflow Procurator Line tutorial with VoiceOver. Okay, first of all we need to create our PRT loader. We only need the first partition to be shown in the viewport. With 10% in the nth particle mode. Okay, let's take a first look. So before we make our first test render, we put an Omnilight in the scene and place it at the right position. Okay, first test render is okay, but we choose to enable the light absorption mode. Okay, then we start creating our magma flow. First off, we set our channels we want to manipulate. In this case, it will be density, the color, the emission, the velocity, and a PRT viewport color, just to check from time to time what we are doing. Okay, color is pretty easy because we simply take an input vector and set it as a dark green. Okay, now we create our texture. This will be a simple color ramp, but in a spiral gradient type. I put some colors in it, some bluish, some pink, a little bit purple. That should be good. Okay, let's watch what we got. Check it out with the auto update enabled. Then we also plug it into our emission channel. Okay, then we take our velocity, normalize it, convert it into floats and only take the x component. Then we add a value of 1, divided by 2, just to get values between 0 and 1 and use it as a blend mode in the blend function. In this blend function we switch between a static color and the colors from our texture. If we always want to see our emission channel in the viewport, an elbow makes our life pretty much easier. Now we take advantage of our material index channel just to separate the particles from the line and the diffuse particles. For that we use a switch operator to switch between the texture colors and an almost perfect white for the line particles. So you mix up the inputs of the switch operator but I corrected it. Okay just testing around a little bit with the settings. So here we consult the H channel just to prepare the loss of emission strength over lifetime 
by simply multiplying it with a value of 0 0.9 yeah because the lifetime is uh, more than one second and then we subtract this from one and just for security purposes we put it into a clamp function so that the values won't go lower than zero okay material index also very useful for our density we first need to convert it into floats then multiply it by two and use it as the exponent of a power function with a base of two and then we divide it from one so our results will be either a fourth or a sixteenth but we will multiply it anyways with the clam function we did before so the values will decrease over lifetime yeah and here's the proof when we disable emission we only see the particles influenced by their density okay so before we multiply our emission color with the clamp function, we first need to implement a switch function to detect if a particle is from the line which should never diminish. So in case of that, it gets a value of 2 as a multiplier. Okay, just checking it up at frame 27 where some particles are almost dead. Okay, it's al always useful to take the velocity for the emission strength. So we do, we take the velocity, take the magnitude from it and divide it by 25. Put it in a power function with an exponent of 3. And of course, put it in a new switch operator to make sure that only the diffuse particles will get these values, otherwise they only get one as a multiplier. And also, just because we will render with motion blur later, we also use a switch operator to multiply the velocity of the line particles with lower values. so that the line won't end up so blurish. Okay, so let's give it a test render with motion blur enabled. Yeah, just take these settings, they are all right. Just leave the original emission strength we get. Mm. Not already there. Let's change the colors. Okay, to be honest, right now I'm taking the original colors from the color ramp of the intro scene of the Electrolyte video. Okay, these were the final settings for the texture. So now it comes to glitter. Very useful to get some glitter is not only to not only to match a model with a certain number but to match it with a also randomized number. So we don't get a regular pattern of glitter particles. Yeah, and of course we are matching the modulo and the randomized value with the logical equal operator that is controlling a switch operator and the switch operator either gives out the regular emission colors or a white color which is also randomized in its brightness.
Yeah, it's not bad if the maximum value of the uniform random has a very high value like 10 in this case. So these are basically the last fine tunings for finishing our magma flow and then we can set up the camera. Just take a position some um, a bit more from the side to get more of this depth of field effect. And just place the simulation in the middle of the picture. Yeah, and also find the right place for the camera target and the right distance to the camera. And then we can adjust the aperture of the camera. But we need to put a Krakatoa camera modifier on top of it. So Krakatoa can take the depth of field settings and render it. Yeah, but somehow I thought that the scene needs more particles, so I placed more particles on the birth spline. That's why I decided to make the birth spline a bit smaller. <laughs> of course, to let the spheres remain as control handles, I also changed their locations. And to avoid troubleshooting with the simulation, I changed the animation. I slowed it down after the first find target event. Yeah, but basically all the other settings remained the same. Yeah, and some slightly little changes in this magma flow, of course. As you can see. And then I decided, just like in the electrolyte video, to put the camera just in front of the simulation. So the depth of field is really slightly, but that's why I curved the birth spline at the beginning of the tutorial. So in the end, before the final render, I toggled the override background color setting and put a little dark gray in it just to soften the image a little bit. That's pretty cool. I also did this at the electrolyte video. Okay, so that's it with my very first tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you all be patient enough for a new project of mine soon. Who knows when I will release a new one. And let me know what you think about this tutorial. And maybe in the meantime I will do another one soon. So thank you very much for watching. And of course thank you for 500 subscribers. It's pretty cool to me. And let me know what you think. Like I said. Goodbye.